master mason's apron, the gavels for the offices of the lodges, the lodge to use, the basis for the gavels, Masonic jewels belonging to past masters of the lodge, collection bowls, another big gavel, a beautiful little wooden replica of mm. what we call in the lodge the tracing board, which you'll see when we go around this afternoon. Various columns over the back, more columns over there, uh, a master's apron, and inside the door of the lodge for security reasons and to keep outsiders out, the outer guard um, or Tyler is armed with a drawn sword. That's an example there. The inner guard inside the door of the lodge is armed with a poignard, the compasses, batons used by the director of ceremonies, and you'll see one of those this afternoon. Behind you is a, wow. an original oil painting done by a man, um, an artist here in Hokitika in 1873, and that depicts um, right wishful brother John Lazard, who was the first provincial grand master of Westland, died in 1878. Locally, there's a park named after him, which has just been totally done up, and there's a park there in his memory, and up at the cemetery, which we'll maybe have a quick look at tomorrow, a huge Italian marble obelisk, uh, uh, and uh, his, the obelisk is engraved with uh, uh, Masonic symbols. So a lot of the item, items here came from Pacific Lodge and it's the other lodge in Hokitika that formed after Pacific was a Scottish lodge, uh, Westland Kilwinning. And in 1892 with the formation of the Grand Lodge of New Zealand, the Westland Kilwinning decided they'd had enough of the Scottish constitution so they surrendered their charter and joined with the Grand Lodge of New Zealand. Pacific Lodge was one of the few on the west coast, Phoenix being the other one, and Greymouth Lodge, both still operating. Um, they decided to stay to this day with the uh, United Grand Lodge of England. So stored here is a lot of things, and if you move this away around here, I can show you a couple of other things. Over here is a very beautiful column, a beautiful column which was positioned in front of the lodge in the early days in front of the senior warden and uh, it sat there and on top of it was a colour photograph of what the lodge rooms looked like when Pacific was using it right up until the time they departed Hokitika in uh, 1978 and it carried on with Western Kilwinning Lodge using it through to the middle 1980s when they completely folded up and the lodge rooms became very derelict. It was subsequently sold to the Hokitika Dramatic Society for $13,000 land and buildings and uh, the money was jointly uh, <coughs> was halved between the two lodges and Pacific straight away donated their share of it to Western High School for a scholarship. I don't know what the other lodge did with their money. In behind here is, you can see tucked in here, a, a wooden pedestal with a beautiful um, um, edged cushion on the top and that would always sit immediately in front of the master and you'll see it depicted here in the photograph and it contained what we call the Bible or the volume of the sacred law, which must always be open when a lodge is transacting business. Up the top, there's various chairs. You come around, and they have survived for many, many years. And there's a master's chair, senior warden's chair, junior warden's chair. Um, and they're marvellous that they've survived and I wouldn't have the museum staff get them down. They're A, they're heavy and B, they're strapped down. 
And here is a, an old tin trunk, and there's a real history to that trunk. When I set out years ago to write a history of the Pacific Lodge of Hokitika, I asked those in the Lodge in Christchurch, where are the original records of the Lodge? And no one much knew. A few years later, a house was being destroyed, demolished in South Brighton. And out the back in a garage lean-to, there was a little locked door. And inside, with a lot of other junk, was that trunk. And um, whoever was doing the demolition got hold of the Pacific Lodge because they found that trunk contained all of the original records of Pacific Lodge of Hokitika, except one minute book from about 1910. And marvellous that it um, survived that long. But there's another story to that old trunk. It belonged to a man called William Simmons Dini, D-I-N-I, of Italian descent, who was Captain Mercer's um, aeronautical engineer at the old original Southside Airport over the Hokitika River, long before the airport was built up on the terrace. And he was the first master of Pacific Lodge when it transferred its charter to Amberley. And for many years, and those of you that live in Christchurch will know the Antigua Street boat sheds and the canoes. Bill Denny operated that for something like 40 years. So that's where they are. They're available to, uh, certainly been made available to me, courtesy of the museum staff, and um, for anyone that's seriously wanting to study the uh, uh, history of Pacific Lodge. So I wrote about Pacific, Greymouth Lodge, Lazar, John Lazar, and a great photograph here taken in the lodge rooms. This one here, more recent times, I don't know the year. The lodge rooms as it was, way back, with men wore moustaches. The lodge rooms, when it, the lodge was finished, became derelict and was in terrible shape at the time it was sold. Richard John Seddon, interesting man, first Premier of New Zealand. He joined the lodge in Kamara and uh, then came to Hokitika uh, when he first became a Member of Parliament, joined Pacific Lodge and he was thrown out a few years later because he never paid his dues. He had been declared bankrupt by then. Uh, John was there and photographed inside the lodge rooms as they were with the master's chair and two chairs on the side. And that's a big gathering. That's not in Hokitika. That's a gathering outside <laughs> the old lodge rooms in Graham. Don't tell him too much, Hill. Okay. <laughs> you said close to 50 minutes. Yeah, they had a lot of oh, yeah. Next group.